A man who is known as the father of his three sisters, and he is known as John Nelson Darby. Okay, in so we call him J.N. Darby. Darby and other brethren, minister brought this lesson to United States America, that's called America. The rise in the popularity, okay, the rise in popularity of the criticism of others through the Bible conferences, the rise of the Bible institutes and Bible colleges, and the influence of the Douglas Theological Seminary. Now remember, the Douglas Theological Seminary is one of the most premier and most prominent and well-known, uh, one of the biggest a seminary in the world today, okay, where they have more than a, about a, almost uh, altogether they have a staff of more than six to seven grades, and they have different different campuses. But the center is in Dallas, Texas. So the influence of Dallas Seminary has great influence. The so-called is dispensational theology. Now, this the dispensational theology actually began with a man called. Uh, Zen Darby. Okay, Zen Darby uh, <coughs> was a British uh, in a system. And later, what happened in that the popularity of a radio and television program from the successful teachers like Hal Lindsay, uh, the book, one of his book, uh, one is The Great, The Late Planet Earth and Left Behind book series. Uh, were books published from a dispensational perspective that became a bestseller? So this Pennsylvania name remained popular in the United States of America, but also has a many, many critics. Now, and then we have another one that is uh, a Scofield, all right? The Scofield Bible has really helped uh, this uh, dispensational theology. And later on, this is how today the dispensational theology has become one of the most popular doctrines uh, in the world today. So we'll be focusing on that. That's the reason why it is important to understand the origins of this so-called dispensational, dispensational theology. But then we have found here some of the flaws we believe and the doctrines of dispensationalism and we'll be focusing on that. Uh, and in, in the short, you have to understand that dispensation doctrine is actually not biblical doctrine. It is not like apostolic one that is biblical doctrine. It is indeed a man-made uh, in a doctrine. So let's talk about a man-made dispensational spiritual in a view. The distinctiveness of dispensation dispensation view were the first set forth by uh, John Nelson Darby. Now remember. Is a leader in the Plymouth Brethren, the Plymouth Brethren group in England, in about 1860. Okay, remember that. In about 1830 and 1860. Okay, in, 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 I think uh, more accurate would be 1830. Uh, so this transcendental then uh, became a worldwide popular doctrine in those days, popularized by the Scofield Reference Bible. Now remember. The Scotland reference Bible was um, mostly uh, in the KJV versions, but it has here over here is uh, the reference, and on the on the bottom you have the footnotes. Okay, explanation. For example, a uh, people who cannot understand Matthew 20 verse 19 and 20. Okay, you have the definition over here. Explanations that the name here signifies the you know the name of God, therefore the Father, Son, Spirit is a biblical, for example. But we know that, that the name, similar name is Jesus. And so therefore the early church carried out that the, the, uh, fulfilled the commission of Jesus Christ and began to baptize every nation in Jesus' name. But the Scorpion will, uh, you know, will, uh, it's only as a Darby who said in a different way. Who said, no, the actual uh, you know, biblical baptism should be not in Jesus' name but Father, Son, Spirit. So they, they twist the God's word. Now this is how they have a football. So, and then, with the help of the United Nations, the, the, the Scorpion a reference by was police in terms of millions, and then had that, that book, the Bible, so called the Scorpion Chain Reference Bible, was circulated all over the you know denominations, uh, across the denomination churches in all over the world. And then in all across the Bible schools and seminaries, 
Now they have an access to this a Scofield Bible. So when you have an access to Scofield Bible, you are more influenced because a soft Scofield Bible is not just the Bible, but it has its own footnotes. Okay, the footnotes explanations are the view of a John Nelson Darby. Now this is how uh, in this uh, 19th century, uh, okay, this is how this popularity of uh, the dispensational of view has become so popular. So therefore we are saying this dispensation became a very popular popularized by the Scofield Reference Bible and stands today as the prevailing as Catholic assistant in the United States of America and also in different different Bibles, uh, places in the world today. This consensus governing principle is that the history of mankind is divided into two different periods and God deals with the sun race on the basis of some specific principle for its period. It should be noted that not all the dispensationalists are agreed on a number of dispensations. So what we need to understand is dispensation beliefs are as the following. Number one, they said the promises made to Abraham and David are unconditional and in no sense have these uh, promises were fulfilled by the church. Okay, that's one point. And the second point is that it follows, therefore, that God has a separate program for the church and Israel. So therefore, uh, they do not accept that the church is Israel or Israel is the church. The church is scarcely if all in the prophets, in the only prophets. And Jesus came, okay, to offer an earthly, a uh, physical, a uh, literal kingdom to Israel. Okay, this is the view of a uh, dispensationalism doctrine. Well, this is the view of Jen, Jen, uh, Jen Darby, Jonathan Darby, but again, as I said, Okay, so this Francisian doctrine was popularized by Scofield Reference Bible. So in the olden day, the Scofield Reference Bible is the only uh, Bible that was available. And you can also even have it uh, in a free. So this is how that in a boat, okay, in hundreds and thousands, uh, they would send to many Bible colleges in schools and, uh, you know, like for example, like hospitals, right? And all the Christians, uh, you know, high schools at the high school level. And also in all the Bible schools, school and colleges, they were freely distributed. And this is how that the Scofield Bible has indeed popularized the doctrine of you know, dispensationalism. So every dispensationalist uh, apologist would say, uh, you know, a Bible teacher would say that indigenous Christ came to offer an earthly, physical, and literal king. That's what they believe. Okay? But when you, when you study it from the Bible, you can see that it is totally opposite to what okay, G.N. Darby and other people has to offer. Because if you contrast the Bible, Jesus Christ never came to offer an earthly physical kingdom. So today we'll be uh, you know, talking on the point of that. And the third, the fifth point is that Jesus coming again to rapture uh, the church and so finally establish an earthly uh, kingdom promise to Israel. Now remember, even the rapture theory is also emerging along with the Zion Darby. Okay, this is also part of this person theology. Now remember, only the goats, uh, a member of the Catholic Church, her name is Mary Margaret. Okay, Mary Margaret, a 17 years old, a young lady, claimed that she had received a vision. And uh, she said that the church has been raptured, that means not the building, the people has been caught up into the sky. And then the sinners, those who are not yet uh, spiritually born again, they have been left behind. And all the saints of God, you see, for example, uh, if the raptures occur according to their view, you will see only my uh, ID card, you will see only my clothes, my pen over here, and my sandals, and everything will be caught up on it. Okay? Next, they can be kept, they can be caught like that. <laughs> Including all my clothes and my underwear, and everything. <laughs> So therefore, sometimes the you know you can see the uh, this kind of uh, notifications uh, on the FB that some people you know probably display that in case of the rapture, my Facebook will not be updated. And you know what I used to say? I said, well, let me explain. Not in case of rapture, but it's in case if you when when you die, your Facebook will not be updated because once you die, how will you how will you will update your Facebook? So this is how this uh, the rapture theory was again uh, very become very popular popularized by the uh, 
the Jain Darby doctrine was proclaimed by again by the Scofield Bible. And then, according to this principle, there is a second coming occurs in two stages. So, according to them, the second coming uh, occurs in two how many how much? Two stages. So, what are the two stages coming? Number one. So, according to their view, the second coming occurs in two, what did I say? Stages. Okay, number one. Now, they're saying the church has started. Let's say this is the church. Okay, now let's say this is the church age. Okay? Now, according to their view, it is also biblical that the church began on the day of Pentecost. They don't say the church began from the Jordan River. There are people who say that the church actually started from the Jordan River. No. Actually, the church started from the day of Pentecost. And we know that that's what Jesus is talking about. All right, over here, you see, that Jesus is saying that on this rock, that rock is not referring to, a, you know, Simon Peter, okay, this Petros and Petra actually refer to Jesus Christ himself, because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, who is the rock? The rock is our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. So Jesus is not saying that uh, uh, upon Peter I will do matches, no. God has used him, amen. He is like a captain among the children of the second Jesus Christ. He's just like our, our team leader. However, the church was not being on Peter, but it's being on Christ. Amen. You understand that? So on this rock, see, on this rock. What is that dark rock? Referring to Christ himself. Amen. Because the rock is Christ. I will build my church. It does not say churches. And therefore we understand the church actually being on the day of Pentecost. Now, even they also agree that. But the disagreement is this that we understand the church age is everlasting. The church age is something that will continue forever. The generations will come and the rest will pass away. And including all of us, we'll all die someday. Physically, we will all die. But the new generations will rise again. And then God will uh, anoint some other preachers and other, you know, his servants. And they will continue. To preach the Acts of the two verse 38. Okay, the New Testament God's plan of salvation. They will continue. Amen. Remember the Acts 2 of the verse 38. The New Testament God's plan of salvation was first preached on the of Pentecost. And who preached for the first time? Peter. Amen. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized that every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and is to receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise unto you and your children, as many as, uh, as, many as the Lord our God said. Oh, amen. You see that? So, whether we are alive or not, <coughs> even, okay, <coughs> even our generations will definitely come to an end. Today, you can say, I'm a 40 or 45. But by the grace of God, even if I have a very uh, a long life, then I don't think we can live above 1780, right? It's all by the grace of God that some people should live up to 85 and 90, but it's very rare, right? But one thing is certain, that whether we like it or not, after a hundred years from now, all of us know this story in this classroom, including myself, we will all die physically. Amen. You got it? Amen. And if you don't die, how will you get into heaven? In order to go to heaven, we must die. Hallelujah. Am I right, Amen? Whether you like it or not, you can say, Lord, I don't want to die. Physically, I don't want to die. I don't want to become old. I don't want to have a wrinkles. Like even our sisters, also, for example, now that you are looking at me, you might admire yourself. <laughs> but someday, after 40, 50 years from now, you, know, you guys will become an old lady. And the same thing will happen to me and all of us. So, whether we like it or not, okay, someday, other day, this our uh, human life will come to an end. And then the new generations will rise again. Amen. And God will anoint some other preachers and some other evangelists. And they will continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
the two thousand years of the past, but still in ABTS here, here in ABTS, we are still preaching and teaching the doctrines of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are still preaching to the people, teaching and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The same is being carried out even to this day. So now, uh, according to the Zendar, it is said the church age is temporary, which means the church age is temporary. The sense it is not for permanent. The church age will come to an end. So here you will come to know about the two stages of the second coming uh, taught by this dispensation. The first stage of the second coming is that Christ will appear in the clouds. He will come in the cloud over here and he will rapture. Okay? So according to them, this is how the first rapture will occur. The second coming um, okay, occurs in the two Stages according to okay the Zona Zadabi and the Zona Carter and